Well, hello, what have we here? The next SWOTOR update was just announced mere moments ago, literally, and there's a fair amount to unpack. So we're going to talk about that and more on this episode of the SWOTOR Escape podcast from newoverlords.com. Our broadcast astromech today is EPC 456. And with me is my co-host, Seema. Hi, Seema. How's it going? Guess what, Max? What? <laughs> so... Remember last week I was talking about how I finished like Galactic Seasons 3 and all this stuff? Mm -hmm. I I opened up my mission log today, which apparently I don't do very often, and I saw there was a a, a, a quest with for Faye that I had not done. I'm like, oh my god. So I went and did that. It was called like Handle the Handler, so I had to go to Mech Shaw and click on a few things and kill a dude. And then um, there was another quest after that on my ship where we just have like a sort of a summary conversation where she says, yeah, I'm glad we completed all this stuff. I'll be your bestie now. So I yeah, hadn't I don't know really if I did finished. It. I don't remember if I did it or I didn't do that conversation with her. And then while I was thinking about it, uh, the, um, Fenze, Fen oh, the other one, Galactic Seasons 2 guy with one eye. Chad Bain. Chad Bain <laughs> was also <laughs> had... <laughs> so I also hadn't done um, all the conversations with him. So he surprised me when I went to talk to him by uh, pulling Arthur into the mix and accusing Arthur of having been the person who attacked him and shot out his eyeball. You shot Arthur my eye out. Arthur from Galactic Season 1, yeah. Uh, are they on your ship? His yeah, Benzeal is on. Well, your ship? I don't, I don't know if Arthur is, but he does come in this conversation. Huh. Um, but Fenzel and and Faye are. That's cool. And he convinces him that you no, know, he was not the one who did it. In fact, he says he killed the guy who did it. And then Fenzel says, "Well, that's even worse because <laughs> I wanted to kill him." Ah. Uh, but they make up and become partners. Well, they're on the crew now, so they better, they better be. Right. You all, I mean, I guess you, as the as the player, you have a little. Like I said, you know, settle down, guys. Let's hash this out. But there were options to like, you know, you're lying. Oh, <laughs> so I don't do? know. <laughs> Maybe they don't always end up as best friends. But yeah. anyway, um, I, that's what I was doing today because I I had logged on. I was gonna go and do the relic quest line on Runic, but I got distracted by yeah <laughs> Faye. <laughs> Yep. And doing that stuff. Um, but yeah, we went to Runic. Speaking of Runic, we went to Runic during MFN this week and we killed the world boss there. So that was a first. First time for me killing it and obviously first time going for MFN. Um, but yeah, it was. it's a good addition to the world boss roundup because it's not hard to get to and it's not hard to kill. I mean, it's not. you don't need voice communications to right. get her done or right. anything like that. Um, so yeah, I like that. Yeah, we're well, um, and we were gonna before we knew that this was gonna blow up with the 7.2.1 news. We actually spent Seema and I spent the morning laying out what we we're gonna talk about in terms of Runic, yeah. and the world boss was gonna be a a big piece of it. And I was gonna spend part of the day do, doing <laughs> catching up on some of the other things. So I'm not done right. with the relic hunt either. Yes, yes. Now I'm, I'm gonna spend part of some other day catching up on that stuff. An idea I had was maybe doing the during the podcast when when we do get back to runic and we talk about the hidden achievements and the run the relic dailies and the world boss maybe you and you and I will two man the world boss while we're while we're talking through it okay on the, on the, on the, on the show maybe that sounds nice and boring if we can if we can actually do do a show while we're doing it that's, yeah, that's the only right. problem with doing it that way but yeah okay and then in our um our ops night, which was tonight, we went back to R4, which we hadn't been to R4 in the last couple of months because instead we've been, since since there's no upgrades for story mode people in R4, we were doing other, um, the older story modes to get upgrades. And tonight we went back and we kind of just retraced our steps and did the first boss and the second boss and a few attempts on the third boss or several attempts on the third boss. We still haven't, we haven't gotten to Lady Dom yet, right? 
Yeah. Or did we try her once? Yeah, we did a couple polls on Lady Dom, and we'll get back. Okay. We just we also switched up people on roles tonight because we had somebody out, and but it, it was good. I had forgotten to. I totally had forgotten until it, I saw the it, dance. and then it started to yeah. come back really quick. But yeah, I had forgotten right. the mechanics. Yeah. Um, we, we didn't really run afoul of the trash stuff. Like there's, there's two sort of, I guess I could call them gauntlets. Um, they're a little bit more complicated than a traditional gauntlet, but, um, we didn't have any trouble with those. So that was good. We didn't spend a whole night learning the gauntlets cause we've done that already. Right. Um, so yeah, it was, it was a fun night. Mm-hmm. So how has your week gone? And, and, and tonight, how did your, how's your evening gone so far? It has gone great <laughs> for some definition of great. My evening tonight so far has not gone great. I got I broke something and maybe uh, I don't know, maybe I didn't break something and maybe I maybe actually what I just did to fix it is what actually needs to be done to fix it. I don't know. It's I could not get Discord to to work. I don't know what I was doing there. Uh but it seems to be working now, so I guess that's a thing. <laughs> uh <laughs> That's always frustrating. Yeah, when things like that happen. I mean, you know, I have a weird problem with with um just with the game where it, no matter what I set the graphics to, it sets it to something else every time I log back in. That is annoying. I that would bug the heck out of me. <laughs> right. That, so that, that I do don't mean? know if I'm not logging out correctly or, you know, to make it right over the old settings or whatever, but. Yeah, so that isn't that is frustrating stuff like that where you just don't yeah. it doesn't seem like there's any rhyme or reason. Right. Right. There probably is, but it's just not I just don't see it. But otherwise, I have been doing runic stuff. I've been working on my runic reputation because I'm going to try to get through that. I so on occasion I've been doing some of the dailies and some of the heroics. The Heroic Four, soloing the Heroic Four, that's actually my favorite of any of the dailies of, of or <laughs> or weeklies or anything. Because it's, it's, uh, it's like one of the fastest things to do for, for me. It's, it's a hard fight, but it's <laughs> for whatever reason. You do have to like, you have to kill a couple of things outside and then you just run inside and you kill the one guy. Bang, done. I've got to get a uh, rhythm down to do the other regular dailies and get five of them done to do the weekly. Uh, Cause I need more of that rep. I need a bunch of the rep tokens. Uh, but yeah, on Tuesday doing the world boss, I'm glad we got in there and I'm glad we killed the world boss and it wasn't a problem at, at, at all. I was, the other thing I was, I was thinking of doing was, uh, although I don't know if I would bother to record the whole thing, is it is possible to solo the world boss. If you're a well-geared character and you, can use all of you like defensive cooldowns and healing while you're doing some DPS. It takes like 20 minutes <laughs> apparently, but people do this. People go and so solo that world, that runic world boss. So I was going to go do that, uh, but maybe, and maybe like record it for, for three minutes or five minutes and then probably quit <laughs> and just like walk away. I'm not going to sit there for 20 minutes and hammer on the thing. You I could, you could put it, it on a loop and, and, and <laughs> say you're streaming like you did with and then wait for some other group to kill it and sweeper. like take and then like cut to the to corpse laying on the ground no just yeah. never do it just do an endless loop <laughs> like you did with minesweeper yeah dude yeah oh yeah man that was like that was like nine years ago or eight yes. years ago i streamed on twitch for <laughs> april 1st one year i i recorded myself playing minesweeper and then i looped it and then I put on Twitch, I said, 24 hour Minesweeper stream. That's what this new channel is. And I just, I played that on a loop <laughs> into the stream and just let it go for a couple hours and saw, just checked if anyone noticed. And yet people did. Anyway. That was before we reached extreme internet April 1 joke fatigue. Yes. Now I don't do, now I log off and I go Luddite and I don't touch electronics. I don't even turn on, I shut, I, Pull the electricity fuse in my house, and I light a candle, and I <laughs> <laughs> scented candle, and I I chop, you sit I in whittle a beam I, of sunlight, I, and I, eat your chicken sandwich. I I, I whittle. Uh, <laughs> you whittle. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. Any any subs during the Minesweeper stream? That would have been hilarious <laughs> if that like went huge, and then I had to like become a Minesweeper streamer <laughs> for, for my life. <laughs> Anyway, that's what I've been doing. Let's talk about the actual news. 
Now an Imperial News Network report. So we do got a couple things, very minor thing that's in the news was what? Uh, we had a server down, didn't we? So I guess that's minor. It's probably not minor well, to some people. <laughs> it was 3 a.m. on a Wednesday. I mean, yeah, 3 if you're a playing at 3 a.m., it's you're there for a reason, well, that's, though. That's nice. I mean, that's that's uh, we have friends that play. That, that's what I think that's evening for Zen and for p- the people in the UK. That's morning. That's yeah. breakfast. English breakfast, uh, baked beans and uh, <laughs> bangers toast. and toast it was a mesh <laughs> they and do biscuits. they bake baked beans for breakfast all the time for whatever re- reason they uh, don't call them baked beans they, though uh yeah they do just call them they just call them beans oh beans uh you know you know what i was thinking of is that <laughs> anyway i'm all all derailed here so yeah we had the server down but it was only down for like 20 minutes and uh came right back up I really appreciate whoever was working at Bioware on 3 a.m. on a Wednesday and getting that up. But so minor, minor thing. We just didn't have a lot of news besides the big news, which is part of our segment. So I wanted to throw that in. What else we got, Seema? That I just want to note that uh, uh, events for this month, we're wrapping up Pirates now. So this is your chance to go to Dantooine and finish anything you want to do there, um, including some other four-man and two-man heroics if you want to. Yep. And then coming up in two weeks will be Bounty Contract Week. It sure will. Bounty Contract Week is a good one. We always mention it when it comes around. You can get a bowcaster if you are a rifle user. Uh, I think a, either sniper rifle or blaster rifle, uh, not hand blasters. Uh, but you can get bowcasters from the Bounty Contract vendors, which is super cool. It's one of my favorite weapons. I use it as my tanking weapon on my Vanguard. Uh, uh, community news. So shout out to the chat room. Shout out to all the content creators as well. There's, I'm sure we're going to be a bunch of things that are happening around 7.2.1. So take a look at that. There is a community event coming up. We'll talk about it now. We'll mention it again in the, in the segment. Uh, by the time you're hearing this, actually, the, the podcast is probably not even going to be out by the time it, it starts up. But uh, for anybody that's listening live or catches the replay soon enough, tomorrow, which is uh, February 10th at 1.30 p.m. Central U.S. time, the devs are going to get on the PTS and do a little PvP. Uh, you do want to get on the PTS and you do want to do one match of PvP whenever you can make it happen. And we may even try to do a guild event to, to pull people into this, because if you do, you will qualify for an Opal Vulptilla mount. It's been a very rare mount. mount up until this point in time. And this will give everybody an opportunity to get one. You will get it when 7.2.1 launches, but sort of a little community opportunity, get, get some friends, get on the PTS. Uh, it's also going to make a big deal in testing the PTS, which we'll talk about. But yeah, thank you very much for the chat room. We started a uh, half hour, 45 minutes late tonight because I was banging around in settings all over the place, rebooting about 17 times to try to get my audio straightened out. And now I, 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 I don't even know. I can't think about it because <laughs> we're bailing wire and duct tape. It is enough to do a show and we'll get through it. What we do have, which we got very excited about, uh, and it was nice to see a big update is 7.2.1 news and it's pretty significant so this dropped this afternoon not long after seem and i had our production meeting to determine what was going to be on the podcast (laughs) yes right but so which is good yeah. Better than what I was predicting. I thought, you know, yes. we, we predicted it's always going to be Friday whenever they announce something. Right, right. So we knew, we we figured news would be coming up soon. We appreciate it. Five minutes after the show, five minutes before the show, perfectly fine. In fact, it was at, at, a, perfect, at a perfect time because we'll still use this stuff that, the, you know, we were just going to talk about the stuff on Runic and maybe even break it up into two. Uh, but we had homework that we were going to have to do this afternoon to like finish up some of the relic stuff, maybe record a little thing and didn't have to do it because <laughs> we've got all this. 
to go and uh, talk about. So, okay. Uh, don't mind if we do. So that is what we're going to do. We are going to talk about this in detail. There is more in here than I expected for what they would be doing next, especially, and I'm a little confused that they're calling it a 7.2.1 release. I guess they haven't committed to any content, any story. So maybe that's right. why they're talking about it as a point. A point, a point yeah, point, point is maybe point like one. systems updates and bug fixes. But even with that, it's it's relatively big. So we'll we'll go through it. Uh, well, I mean, I would call Galactic Season Four content. I I, I guess we yeah. could argue I, about I, I, like maybe they maybe they're gonna content, like seven yeah. dot. Maybe they only use the major the you know like dot three needs to have like a story beat or something before they'll call it a dot three. So they had to call this one a a, a two dot one. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go through in their order. We'll we'll talk about this stuff. We'll give our kind of hot take because a couple of these deserve some some hot takes. And it, but I mean our hot takes will be relatively uh, w pleasantly warm <laughs> and comfortable <laughs> because that's how, takes. how we roll. I I like what I'm seeing in general. Uh, number one though, Galactic season four. So Galactic season four, a passage of peace. Did they a passage of peace? Is that what that? Yeah, a passage of peace, like. Yeah, that's what it's out. called. I don't know. I thought I don't know why that in my head that was something else. Like, did they come in and edit this in the last <laughs> in the last hour? <laughs> right. Is Jackie on here editing it to 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 mess me up while while I'm looking at it on the stream? Uh, no, I'm sure she is not. Uh, passage of peace. So this sounds a little bit different than like the, hey gangster gambler gangster shooter guy stuff that we've had. I wonder. And this is speculation. The companion's name is Amity. What do you think, Seema? Is this going to be one of the things that we talked about last week and in our Discord about would you prefer a a Force user companion? You think this is going to be? You think Amity I mean, is going to be it? I I hope I'm not being sort of influenced by wishful thinking, but it feels very like you say non gangstery. So like, oh, I don't know. Unless they have some reason why they need for Galactic Season Companions to be always to be tech. I I feel like this could be a force user. Yeah. And a pub force user. Well, it's gotta work for Imperial players too. It does have to work for both, but but I mean that's like um yeah. you know yeah. Darth Hexed right. can be a companion for either side. Yeah. Right, exactly. So it could be right. It could be a, a Jedi that joins your alliance. Even if you know, I mean, if it, I just say that because the word amity would it means like friendship or something. It right. doesn't sound very dark right. side. Along with this companion amity, and I will we, who we we will be traversing the galaxy with. Very big news. This is one of the the things I'm so happy about. Uh, is a Mech Shaw stronghold. Extra Mech Shaw Hideout Stronghold. That sold this whole that's that's why I think this should be like an 8.0 release right there. <laughs> not, <laughs> so not do that one. Oh yes. The Mech Shaw Stronghold. Right. That is awesome. Oh, oh, wow. Okay. So you talk about how much you like the Mech Shaw Stronghold, and I will real quick on the back end. Somebody does anyone remember? Uh I'm gonna I'm gonna have to like Pop, pop up another window. I'm going to kind of break. You're going to have my... to keep asking the question for us to know if we have the answer. I have not asked. I have used my words. Is that what you're explaining? Yes. Sima? Did yes. we predict, Does did one of us know? predict that would, there would be a stronghold and that it would be a Mech Shaw stronghold? I feel like I predicted this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Now I know what you're looking for. Does anyone remember if he predicted a Mech Shaw? I think a couple of times you predicted a Mech Shaw stronghold. Okay. I did predict a stronghold. I didn't specify Mech Shah in my note here for the stronghold, but I said a new stronghold with upgraded graphics and textures. So I I may have burned myself a little bit. I may only get partial credit if it still has the, just the regular Mech Shah uh, graphical graphics. assets. Yeah. So we will see. Well, I'm I'm kind of excited about it. I want to see how it I want to see how it pans out. I think our raid leader Corley though has already shot himself in the foot because he said if I'm if I if I'm not able to see 
live things going on outside my Mekshaw stronghold, then I'm going to be mad. I'm like, okay, well, you might be mad. Well, he, well, he just said, see ships flying around. Like, okay. Which, if you look outside the fleet stronghold, you can see the band in the in the VIP lounge. It's not the real VIP lounge and you can't see players out there. It's a, it's a simulation. It's a, it's a, you're in the matrix. I thought he, the way I took it was, and I see what you're saying, but the way I took it was he wanted to see what was really going on outside his apartment. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, that, I don't think that'll happen either. I don't think that's how strongholds work because they are an instanced area and they have to like simulate you looking out the window. Uh, but I I agree. I wanted to to feel alive. I wanted to feel like you're actually part of the planet. I want to be able to look out and yes, see I, the I totally, yeah. the force field. Because remember, Meksha, you're in the carved out uh, concave face of an asteroid, a mining asteroid mining colony. So it's you basically the whole town is etched into the face of the asteroid, and then it's got a shield dome with openings in it, so she so ships can come in and out. The other thing I really like about Mech Shot, and I, I offered to design this for them. I don't know if you're, this is like a year ago, two, two years ago. <laughs> I offered to design this with for them. The way the buildings are kind of built in Mech Shot is, is very sort of vertical. Everything's sort of stacked up. It's almost if you took cargo containers and you, you stacked them up. Right. So my idea for this, for a stronghold was sort of build it into a vertical with walkways where you got to go up and down and you make it seem like your your rooms are carved out of these cargo container boxes and you got to go up and down through a few of them and that's how your your areas are are spread out they do say it'll be similar in size and scale to the seasonal fleet strongholds so a little bit more apartment size i'm totally cool with that that yeah, sounds me too. that sounds good to me i don't need a Another big, huge one. I love my Yavin stronghold, for example, and I, I use, you know, five percent of it because I, I like the outdoor area with the landing pad where I put some of my big trophies, and I've got my GTN and all my banks and the vendor and everything kind of all laid out there right outside on the in the front lawn, and I never go inside. It's great. It's the only stronghold I've sort of decorated 100% in a right. actual decorations, not just uh, fields of chairs. chairs. <clears throat> Although I, I think it still has posters on, on the walls. But I've got, like, back in the tunnel underneath the waterfall, I've got all my Racklings from my Lord of the Rackling title. They're all spread out down there. But I only use that front area. So a smaller one is perfectly fine, especially if the hooks are well designed so that you can sort of stand in one place and touch all the banks, the mailbox, GTN, and a vendor like a little Jawa to sell junk. That's perfect. That's that's what I like. And I can kind of do that standing in one spot, touch all of those things in my stronghold, almost. I gotta, I gotta stretch a little bit to like get, get to the guild bank. So yeah, that that sounds great. And Galactic Season 4 already announcing it makes me feel like whenever this comes, they're, they they talked about this idea of of getting things getting things going and they've got things lined up. This is this is what they've mentioned that they're going to be able to be releasing content. That's what Keith alluded to in his description of where things were moving and where things were headed. This seems like they're lining it up and they're gonna they're gonna keep things rolling because this is the one thing that they're gonna they're gonna spin right back up is another galactic season, and then the next thing that they're going to spin right up is a PVP season. So as soon as 7.2.1 releases, PVP season two will release. That's also interesting to me. What, uh, what are your, what are your thoughts there, Seema? <laughs> about, oh, about when we're going to see this? No, uh... well, I am going to ask you that. I'll, oh, I'll okay. wait to ask you that. I don't know. Just any, any thoughts on the PVP season? I'm glad that they're oh, starting yeah, no, it up right away. Thoughts. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that they're throwing it out there, especially for the people that are into the PVP and into the PVP seasons. Nice to keep it rolling, not have a big gap in between where sort of nothing's going on. One of the thing they do mention, which I think is kind of important with this is they are looking at tweaking the way things work. 
And if they keep these seasons going and they tweak from, from season to season to season, uh, that can keep things lively, interesting. Uh, so they say explicitly they've been at monitoring the feedback. One thing that they already changed in the PTS, which you can check out, is the changes to attacker and defender medals. So if you play the Alderaan Warzone, the new attacker and defender medals are live in Alderaan. Because you need those medals to achieve some of the objectives of what you're trying to do to progress in the PvP season. And it was really hard to get them in certain situations. A couple of questions from the chat room and, and input. Intasar, uh, love seeing you in there, Intasar. Uh, wish the galactic season and the PvP season didn't overlap. I kind of wish that too. I kind of wish that myself. Now, I just thought you can dovetail it a little bit because often at least every other week there's a galactic season objective that has to do with PVP and there's, there's ranked and on rank or uh, arena and uh, uh, war zone. So you can sort of, so you can roll yeah. it in a little bit, but it does make it difficult. Hit, hit two targets with the same BB. Yes. Hit two targets with the same BB. That's, I think that's, <laughs> that's how it goes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I don't see in here, and the number one thing that I asked for for PvP Season 2 oh. is for GSF to count. Uh, so Eflux, yeah. So Eflux just mentioned it. It's, we don't know that they are or not. Uh, that's that's top on my list, would have, G, to have GSF be part of it. And then Sir Galahard suggests uh, or, or asks, can you buy progress in PvP Season? You can buy progress, but I don't think you can complete the season with credits only. I think that only gets you so far. And I believe because we are far enough through the season, if you go on live, GS, uh, live uh, uh, the live server, because we're on the PTS right now, and it's probably not on here. But if you go on the live server, you can see the PvP season and be able to um, see what you can. Yeah, so here we can. I mean, it, it's, it wasn't from the beginning, it was, it, but you can buy some of it now, right? So 15, to buy 15 out of the 25 levels, so to buy up to 15, level 15 is 979 million credits. So about a billion credits to buy the first 15 levels of the 25. <laughs> That's kind of a lot. It's too much for me. I am not buying that. And that that doesn't even get you the full armor. Or does it get you one of the armor sets? Bracers, belt, gauntlets, boots, pants, but not even the chest piece? No. Level 16 is the chest piece. This still could unlock, but I'm not going to pay a billion for that. Now, and I may, what I might pay a billion for, though, which does show up. This will be a little bit hard to see. I put a animated GIF of this. Is if you look in collections or you go into the PvP vendor on the PTS, uh, there are there are two PvP sets that you can preview, which seem like they are going to be the PvP sets for PV for uh, PvP season two, and it is super cool. So here, let's preview this, and I will try to zoom in here for you so you can see it. Did I get the gloves? Yep. Helmet. It seems to be samurai armor-inspired set. Oh, I missed the helmet, apparently. There we go. Get the helmet on, and let me zoom in here. So, oops. Dang it. Yeah, I mean, people do seem excited about that armor set, which is great. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm really liking it. Uh, and that that is kind of making me excited to, to potentially get in there and, and PvP a little bit for season two, even if I have to double up on the things that I'm doing for, for um, GSF or our galactic season. It does make it a little difficult to do them both. I kind of agree. But yeah, so hopefully the people that are giving it a shot uh, and are playing through the PvP seasons are having fun with it. Uh, and with cool rewards like this, 
it's kind of making it worthwhile. I still would like to catch up with some of my hardcore PvP uh, co uh, friends out there and see what people's thoughts are these days, if it's actually working out for everyone or or not completely, if they feel like they've still lost everything that they felt like they were going to lost, or there is fun to be had. Okay, so here's the armor set. You can get a little bit more of a zoomed in view. I do, I do kind of really like this. And I, I'm sure this is the updated textures. If you kind of zoom in here, it's got that, you know, the new, the new cloth. Uh -huh. Yeah, it just looks a lot of layers, a lot of detail. And I, re I would use the default color scheme as well. It's sort of like a dark it's gray nice. and, and yeah. uh, dusty red. Very, very cool. Sorry, it took me a little bit to get to that. So cool. That is a good one. What else we got? This is the next. This is a good topic, Seema. You introduce this next topic, and uh, we will tell everyone why they are wrong <laughs> in how they're thinking about it. So they are putting in some stuff to combat inflation, and basically, if you think of inflation as the creation of credits without removing them, that allows the economy to grow in an unfettered fashion. Um, I'm kind of, I'm cautiously optimistic about the changes they made because really when they said they were going to make, they were going to start charging for some things that they, that they used to charge for, the first thing that cropped into my mind is training skills, which wouldn't be effective because, you know, that only works until you're max level. But I'm glad they didn't do that <laughs> yeah. for starters. Yeah. Um, a, a feedback from a lot of people seem is that it seems like it's too little, but I'm okay with that. It might be too little because they, um, I get the feeling they're going to start with this and add things going forward. Yeah. So basically that what they've started with this is they're going to, it's going to, they're going to start charging for credits for quick travel. Also charging credits for using your stronghold for travel. Yep. Which, yeah, which is is a bit painful, and a bunch of people are sort of ra raging against that one as as an option that they don't like. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's going to be painful because basically things we've been getting for free won't be free anymore. But I feel like it's a necessary move. Yes, because right now, what ha I think I feel what would happen to me if I started this game today and I, and I went to check the AH and I saw the prices, I would think, okay, I have 10 credits and things are on the AH for a billion credits. That's like a number that I can't even conceptualize really. So, right. so that would be, an, I would, that would be off putting. It is, it is off putting. If you're used to MMOs, it's, it's not. Uh, because, and I, you know, I've, exp I jump, jump around to every game and you, like you go to Eve and there's things that, I mean, you start with 10, 10 IS, 10, 10 units or whatever. And there's things that cost like a trillion. So first, this is what I do in every MMO first to get to max level. Then I worry about the currency because once you're at max level, then the, the, the currency really starts to flow, which is true in star Wars, but it's still it's still very difficult for a lot of reasons because anything that now is at that billion cap with the GTN capped at a billion, uh, is it, it makes it difficult for things that are kind of worth more than a billion that gets really crazy. And the right. other thing that's very difficult is for, uh, the limits on credits for people that are preferred or free to play because there's, you know, big swaths of things that that's just not even physically possible for people to buy because right. they're, they've got caps on how much credits they're allowed to have. So one of, one of the um, points that people have, have said is that this is really punishing for the brand new player. So like you, when you create a character, you start with zero credits. And if you have to pay 5,000 credits to use quick travel, which it's going to be sort of prorated by distance. So, like on a planet like Tython or 
Korriban, it probably wouldn't be the entire 5K. Um, that's going to be daunting. But I'm, I'm okay with that for new players because part of the new player experience is having is starting from nothing. Yep. And so... And walking around a bit. And walk and walking around. So on Tython, if you can't afford to quick travel or take a taxi, you can walk there. It's the, not like in it's the old not days an we had no quick travel and we had no sprint. <laughs> right. <laughs> For the first right. fifteen levels. We had to go No mounts, both ways. no rocket boost, no quick travel, <laughs> and no sprint. We were like <laughs> I know, not even a sprint. So we, we were, were RP like, walking places. Yeah. Yeah. But that's not to say you make it big in my day, blah blah blah. Uh, it it is it is a cost. Now, quick travel. They they said the cost will range from a hundred credits to five thousand credits. I would expect on planets like Korriban and Tython, it's going to be in the hundred credit range. Yeah, because they're tiny. Uh, so that's that's a thing. Um, uh, priority transport. That's and but another comment that people have made though about that is that it's it's going to be ineffective because it's it's punishing for the new player and then me as an existing player won't even feel it. But that's kind of missing the point. It's not yes. about whether players feel it or not. Whether or not it'll be effective against inflation yes. has nothing to do with whether players feel it or not. Yes. So this gets to the core. We could go through some more of these things that, you know, so maybe we'll come back to, but let's let's talk about the, the core of this for, for just a second. Because the, the deal is what they're trying to do here is fix the economy. Not, not, not create uh, socialism <laughs> right, or, not, or communism yeah. and like pool everybody's resources and get rid of billionaires. It's not about get, getting rid of billionaires. That That will not fix the economy. If you took everybody who's got a billion credits or more than a billion credits and you 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 erased their billion credits, that doesn't fix the economy. Economy is credits created and credits destroyed. Credits sink out of the game and credits added to the game. And in, unless those are in balance, what you get is more and more credits keep you know currency gets created and you get inflation. Taking you know, a one-time credit sink does not fix an economy. It does not fix a long-term long -term economy. So people are saying, you should have this big credit sink. Why don't you have these big, big, big credit sinks and like take credits away from, you know, these, these billionaires out there. Um, that, that, that might take, I mean, it, it would put a short-term halt on some inflation because you can take a bunch of credits out one time. But those credits are going to slowly come back in over time and, and inflation is going to start back up again. So what you need to do is you need to move levers. You, levers. you either need to stop credits that are created, like you know, like the credits that you get for doing dailies and for, for doing missions and for bonuses and all of that is credits being created. Um, and then you need to take, the, take credits out. You need to have credit sinks, like what, the, what they're talking about here, like travel costs, repair costs, which is a good one we'll get to in a second. Uh, those take credits completely out of the game. Taxes on the GTN is another one. It takes credits completely out of the game. Anything that is players trading credits back and forth, like I give you credits to, to buy something and you give me credits to, to, to buy something back, that doesn't affect the overall inflation at all because we're just moving credits back and forth within the existing pool of, of money. The other problem is things that target the billionaires are the, the Trace Comas Club is the 1% or the, the, the uh, tenth of a percent of players. And if you take half the money away from you know, one tenth of one percent of the players, you've affected a, f a couple percent. You've what? You've affected one percent of of the economy, or five half point point five percent of of the economy. If you take a few percent away from everyone, now you've affected the, affected the entire economy by a few percent. So that's what that's why you need to and remember yes there's people out there with billions and billions of credits but they're the they're the top 1%. You need to do things if you want to make actual impacts on the economy that affect everyone. 
So that's why it's got to be things that go all the way down and affect even new players. It's travel. It's it's repair costs. It's uh, going to going to your stronghold. Um, so plausible denial says it seems like a lot of players are multi-billion. I think that's true, not just one percent, but I think what Max is referring is to the people that have hundreds of billions, thousands of billions of credit. And wow. like I have ten billion credits just from playing the game Re and selling what I get really not doing anything more than that. I, d I don't know if we'll get full statistics from Bioware, but I would bet it would be a shockingly low percentage of players, even though it seems like, and you know, these people, you know, it, we, us here who are staying up until, you know, midnight uh, central time to talk about star Wars because we love this game. Yes. Amongst our circle, yeah, everybody's a billionaire. Right. But, but of people that play Star Wars The Old Republic and, and own it on Steam and jump in the game and play it, you know, in a, every once in a while and are playing through class stories, it's a diminishingly small percentage of players. They have and said from time to time things like what percentage of players play, you know, to play operations. And it's like, it's like a few percent. And you, all of us here would go, what? We all do operations. <laughs> That's all we do. Right. We do operations all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's not. It's, 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 the, you need to do things that are going to affect all of the people who've never even leveled to, to max level yet. So. Another thing that's going to be difficult for us to know in, as, as we kind of enter this phase is what the results are. Because we aren't going to see yeah. all of a sudden things become affordable on the right. GTN, which is really what we go by, right? Yeah. That's what affects us day to day. Uh, and like I, yeah, I'm I'm shocked anew <laughs> every time I go to the GTN because I think, oh, I'll just buy a few green mats to make my um, invasion force parts today. And then I look at them and I go, nope not going to buy those because <laughs> they are just like in the six figures for mats that you, right. that you pick up off the ground. Right. So, um, I think, yeah. So, so it, it's going to be easy to say to yourself, Oh, nothing's changing because your metrics, the things that affect you are basically what's going on with the GTN. Right. So this is going to be where black, we have to have a little faith costs. too. Yeah. And this is only a first step as well. And they are clear about yeah. that. So right. one of the things I like about this post is that they say, what are their economic balance and goals? Their reduced track, uh, um, reduce cost avoidance, introduce credit sinks, adjust in, in flow of certain repeatable content, but monitor these changes as they, as they impact the economy over time and adjust accordingly if needed. This is a long-term this is a a, a, a long-term process. And it's and also it's what I think and, and what I'm hoping is that this the infrastructure and proceed and process changes they've put in over the last year to, to two years is what's making something like this possible. Yes. So they do have a lever now yeah. that they can pull and push and adjust, hopefully. Right. So yeah, I think this is gonna be a, a an interesting one and maybe one that's gonna feel like it Im impacts a lot of people and make it feel like it's something that we, that people are going to rage about potentially like uh, the, 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 th the threads are already getting into, you know, I, I bought, I bought my stronghold and now you're charging me to, to visit it. You know, that, that does, that makes no sense at all. I mean, you can have credit sinks in the game somewhere. I mean, it makes sense because the, the, the lore of it, the fantasy of it is, is you're going in your, your starship to it. Right. And other games. You're not tessering there. Uh, there. There's credit sinks in every MMO in order to, to manage the economy. If you want, uh, if you want to have a, a house, a stronghold in new world, you have to pay an upkeep cost. And if that upkeep cost, if you don't pay that upkeep cost, you don't get to go there anymore. It doesn't disappear, but you don't get to go there until you pay your rent. Basically, so do we want to pay rent on our strongholds? Could do that. Uh, one of the, so of of the other things that I thought were interesting in here, and maybe speaks, and this is I think this is a good one that speaks more to how you could have progressive, <laughs> like 
like progressive taxation <laughs> is repair cost formulas adjusted across the entirety of the game so that the repair cost increased in relation to item level a little bit better so that the people that are the the high tier players, the people that are running in 336 and above level gear, you'll have a relatively high repair cost. Whereas people that are in item level 10 gear because they just started their character and are they're trying to repair a piece of broken armor, they will have a much, much lower repair cost. That is a progressive, like a progressive tax that will help, I think, take the sting away from new players or players that haven't even leveled up all the way or players that even get to max level but aren't doing the N tier content and maybe even just make all of the prices up to 320 gear relatively low and as soon as you start getting over 3 320 get you know sp spike those repair costs i think that's kind of fair because those are the people that are raking in the credits anyway because they're killing the bosses and they're finishing the content and they're finishing the operations and things like that. Um, one one tweak in relation to that that I thought was interesting was the durability of equipment should now be lost at a lower rate on death. So people that are doing progression content and dying don't necessarily need to worry too much about those ongoing repair costs, but a slightly higher rate on normal gameplay. So the longer amount of time you play, the more you're going to need to to pay for for the the repairs over time that's interesting cuz you kind of forget that you have a repair you uh -huh. you, ta you you have durability yeah damage. your armor does take damage when you get hit right. it's not just when you die yeah right i do remember back in the day again this is another thing back in the day when repair costs were a real percentage of your net worth and we would we would worry about dying too many times and people would be out there like farming and making credits so that they could pay the repair costs when they were going through progression content nobody thinks about that anymore these days and i think that's a fine thing to to think about it a little bit just to to feel the pain you know of of dying over and over again not to not enough to make people quit or not want to do progression content but you know, a little bit of a sting. I don't. I don't think that's a problem. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, yeah. Just running. Uh, yeah, I still run into that because, yeah, it's different because I just haven't given that character enough credits. But yeah, running out of running out of credits to um, send crew members to do yeah. missions. Your death, so like as always, the, is a eflux makes a comment I'm too that to if they made everything in the cartel market untradeable, they would probably kill the billionaire market. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. It's like this is not meant. These measures are not meant to kill the billionaire market. It's meant to remove right. It's it's meant completely. to to stop inflation. Right now. If they do decide to say, okay, there's a there's there's an imbalance here that we want to fix, that would be a different thing. Wealth disparity is completely separate from uh, currency, cre you know, creation of currency. Uh, in inflation, will stop credits from flowing to the people that accumulate credits and have ways of doing that and make that part of their game because there will be less credits flowing into the system for them to accumulate. They are natural vacuums of credits, the people that know how to do it. But taking, again, taking credits away from billionaires just to, or, or, or making it so that they've got nothing to buy doesn't affect the, those overall levels of how many credits are flowing into the overall economy and how many credits are flowing out of the overall economy and being destroyed. Yeah, it's a different, it's, a, it's addressing a different thing and right. whether or not it'd be effective doing that is another conversation, but it's, right. this is just for inflation. Yeah. Yeah, wealth disparity, that's in, <laughs> in, in both the real world and in digital economies, that's a completely separate topic and works works in a completely different way uh, that the, the levers you pull to to affect that okay i mean i just want to say one more thing about inflation the only players 
you ha it, this is okay. The only way to remove credits is from players who are playing. Right. I mean, unless you have like a stronghold tax where if you don't pay it in cer within certain months, then you somehow. But even then, if you could put it on auto pay, maybe. But where, where I was going with that is like you could have a player who's sitting on hundreds of billions of credits. If they stop playing. Yeah. They're, yeah. That's a credit thing. That, those credits have still been created. Right. They've still been created. And if they ever come back, they're still in the economy. Yeah. Uh, those, those players leaving, that's a, that's a, a credit sink, but we're not going to sort of like systematically <laughs> try to achieve that at scale. Uh, but it's take, taking credits away or yeah, the, what, what those pools of, of existing credits do, especially between players doesn't affect the, the right. economy and inflation or deflation. So since we brought up rent for strongholds, I personally would be against that just for me because I don't want something that I have to remember to do. Right. I, I, I don't think I would, I would, I don't think I would begrudge it. I just don't want something that I have to keep track of. I tend to not like in any game, some sort of passive ongoing tax as opposed to active costs. I prefer so I active prefer costs. like having to pay for travel or yeah. having to pay yeah. for something. Cause yeah. then it's, I, you know, I'm interested in doing a thing. I'm going to pay that cost to go do that thing. And if I need to build up some credits to go pay the cost, to go do a thing, I'm motivated to do a thing. What I don't want is, Hey, I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm going on vacation for the next two weeks and, oh, I'm going to, you know, not be able to pay the, the tax on my stronghold when I get back and all my credits are going to pass, you know, be passively draining away while I'm gone. You know, that just feels bad. But there are games that that do that. And I don't like that. The other the other worst version of that that, that I really don't like is DK. Uh, you know, where if you don't pay the tax or if you don't do some sort of upkeep or task then your stronghold decays away and you just, things are destroyed. That really bothers me. So Another thing that people are sort of spitballing about is like, what are some like really big but attractive things they could add to the game that people would buy from vendors and then that would remove a large amount of credits from the economy. And, and I just want to say, typically those don't remove enough Right, because and it's a then one time. the person can just decide not to buy the thing. It's it's one time and it's not systematic. So you might be be able to take you know like if it, you have an if 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 the creation of currency is on an upward traje trajectory and you put in a bunch of really attractive credit sinks so that the billionaires pay a billion dollars to you know whatever do whatever thing, then you'll get a a little dip cliff and then that that same slope of the graph will then continue up. So the inflation is the slope of the graph. The inflation is not, I mean, even if you wiped all credits from the game, but kept things the way they are now, it would just start, everything would start at zero and that graph would still go up. And that's the inflation I mean, is the slope of the one graph. One of the things that they've done system wide, system wise, that's really generous to the player is the way that you can set up your inventory so that as you create new players, they already have max inventory at no cost to you. I mean, I don't know of any other game that does that. Yeah, right. So, like, if the way our inventory slots work, it's you don't buy bags from another player. You just, that's a credit sink that could have been reintroduced. Training um, training costs. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, high, higher, but I think the travel thing is, is going to be a good, a good one because everyone does it all the time they play. Whereas... Training costs you only do till your max level. And, Tra yeah. yeah, travel repair I think is a really good one. Then I would probably raise taxes on the GTN. I uh, would pay a billion credits for inventory search. <laughs> if you could buy an unlock for inventory search, the, the, or seeing all the you know. Anyway, the, the thing I would really like leaping. about uh, taxes raising the taxes on the GTN is. What's the downside there? People might stop using stop using the GTN and just trade directly. That, uh -huh. in my mind, would be a win. 
now because now you've got people you know more people interacting and yeah. you know, more more live trading and the people that do use the GTN that's those the taxes on the GTN are credits like those credits are destroyed yeah. Ra- raise the taxes the people that still want to sit around and sell things for a billion they list everything for a billion credits on the GTN fine we'll just take big big chunks of, of that stuff that's a little bit progressive because if I'm only selling things for a hundred thousand credits you know a thousand you know a thousand credit tax or whatever is not a, that big a deal as opposed to a hundred million credit tax. One thing they haven't done and I thought they, and they might still do in the future is pay less credits, pay yes. fewer credits for th- something. And that is, that is on their list and they're detailed. So yeah. adjusting the inflow in certain repeatable content. So what that means is, so I, I feel like they all have already done this. If you look at the runic, the runic dailies, yes. Yes. The bonus missions on the Runic dailies, you get 16k credits. That's that's like nothing. And that well, continues I, to be nothing. I mean, what do you get? What do you get? I think it's nothing because you don't get rep or anything like that, but also, I mean, what do you yeah, get that, for I bonus guess. quest on Coruscant? Yeah, maybe it's maybe it is maybe it is significant. Still 16,000 credits, I guess. And when we're talking about like 100 credits or 5,000 credits for the most expensive possible quick travel, and one bonus mission on one daily gets you sixteen thousand. It's significant, but that is that is a way. Is the other the other lever you have to to make that graph get flat is to lower the sources of credits coming into the game, and those sources of credits are mission rewards. That's probably number one. So I think it's interesting that. They they include a priority transport because I don't think I've used that in forever. No, you know what we use, which I wonder if it will be part of this. We to and sort of get around that is the heroic transports. Yeah. So yeah, interesting. Yeah, good point. Not, I'm gonna be like that that <laughs> that kid in in class that goes. <laughs> Did you forget teacher. to give us the teacher? <laughs> Did you forget to raise the cost on uh, heroic transports? <laughs> and everybody's going to go, ah. <laughs> I will say. Um, all right. Uh, the, the couple of two, w- one other big thing, um, which, which, which we should, should certainly talk about what we have been talking about for months is the 64 bit client. So they've said, and we didn't realize this would be coming this quickly. 7.2.1. So the next update is going to be the 64-bit client. Uh, we're on the... Are we still logged in? Nope, I logged out. Get yeah, on the PTS I just, right I now. I now logged back in, yeah. It's, it's the 64-bit client. You're playing with all the bits. You have a big bag of bits, and you can just, pl- you just feel... You can feel the bits. They're just like spread around right just outside of your peripheral vision. <laughs> it feels really, really good. Uh, I'm really excited to have this in the live game. It feels really smooth. Everything just uh, just feels performant and smooth and smoothed out. The big challenge here is that it requires a ton of testing. So they've done a ton of, ton of their own testing. They've got all of their their test their test harnesses and test configurations. What they can't do though is every single player's weird combination of you know one to ten year old hardware mixing right. processors and motherboards and video cards it's impossible laptops impossible. desktops yeah laptops desktops ones. uh steam deck whatever yeah whatever your whatever you know whatever configuration you're playing it on so they need people just to get on just get on the PTS and do anything just do anything. Now, this is why they've added in this really cool reward if you get on the PTS and play a war zone, which is a significant thing. And it's it's a you know it's group content, and then there's you're sort of get, sort of getting at least a number of people in a, in a particular place, and everybody's using all of their abilities. You go do one war zone, get on the PTS and do one war zone, and you will get an Opal Vulptilla mount. This is the rarest mount in the game, one of the rarest mounts in the game. I guess I can't say it's necessarily the rarest if we go back back to some of the old days. But a very rare mount currently, and it's a new mount that's very rare. 
I am writing here on the screen right now the red Vulptilla. There's the two that are in the game are the red Vulptilla and the blue Vulptilla. The opal has been limited to just a number of giveaway codes, prize codes that some of the content creators and the, the devs have had. Very limited in distribution, probably it ba you know basically handfuls of of people of of all that have had opal vulptillas up to this point. So everyone will get them now. Uh, the, the the it's a very cool opportunity to get something pretty rare. It's worth it to get on there and do it because you're also helping out making the game better. As we said, uh, participating in PvP matches is what you want to do. The best times to do that are either right now, as soon as you hear this, people will be front loading their activity on the PTS. As soon as the PTS comes up, people get in there and try it. I was on there this afternoon. People are trying to get PvP matches going. Uh, Friday, February 10th at 1.30 p.m. Central. Again, when this when this hits the YouTube feeds, probably be, probably going to be too late, but maybe there'll be more going on over the weekend as well. But Friday, 1.30 p.m. Central, the devs were going to get on, and that usually spikes activity. Great time to do it. They also tend to repeat that from time to time. So Jackie may be able to rally the troops and get the devs in there on Monday or Tuesday as, as well. And then if not, get with your guild. All you need is eight people, four, four people to do two teams of four and queue up and you'll get an arena. And we in AIE guild may try to get that going in the, ne in the next week or two as well. Uh, for everybody that misses the, the thing tomorrow and wants to, wants to get in on it. Um, so, and if we do that, maybe we'll put, put a shout out and other people can queue up too. We're, we're not looking to just do a, a private PVP event. If it's an opportunity for more people to get on there and they know people are queuing, people will jump on and queue to get that done. Cool. Cool. So that brings us to the key question, the, the, the critical question, Seema, <laughs> 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 when are we going to get 7.2.1? Now, now here's significant input because I would be pretty aggressive in saying, oh, you know, we're going to get it. I Maybe we're going to get it in a few weeks. Uh, we can't get it any earlier than 25 days from the sound of, of this right. recording. Like Galactic Seasons 4 is not going to start during Galactic Seasons 3. Right. And PvP season two is not going to start, you know, that's still got 25 days as well. So and it can't start for 25 days. So, so far, the pattern has been that we have a pretty good break between galactic seasons. Um, but they could telescope that down a bit. Yes, which I think they're going to. I think yeah. this is going to come hot on the heels of, of, just, I mean, because 25 days is still a significant amount of time and the everything is looking really good on the PTS. It's not like they have a bunch of content to refine or an operation to build or or anything like that. And this is 7.2.1. I think it's, I think just from everything I've seen and what I'm seeing on the PTS, they seem like they're potentially pretty close to ready to go. Okay. I'm going to go with March 21. March 21st. So what would what's actually 25 days from now? So here's the 10th. There's 7, 14, 21. So 25 days is March 7th then, right? That's about 25 days from now. Uh, that's, or the 6th or, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so what did you say then? 21st. Uh, March 21st. So two weeks after that? Yeah. Ooh, that's a really good date. Okay. I mean, I thought I was giving it three weeks because I did my February math too quickly, but yeah, I'll, I'll stick with 21. That's a really good date. So chat room saying even further, two weeks after that, Intisar is going for April 4th. You know what? I'm going to be bold. I'm going to be crazy <laughs> and say March 14th. Okay. Fifth. What's what's the Ides of March fifteenth? That's a good question. 
I think the Ides of March is March 15th. Isn't that the Ides of March? Yep. That's what Google says too. Okay. Ides of March. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got I to gotta make a note here. Uh, Seema says March 21st. Uh, Max says Ides of March. Okay. I will put together a question thread and we will have a, a prize code, not an Opal Voltilla because you'll get, you'll get those anyway, but something significant, a big, I'll get us a big prize code, maybe something like a 30 day subscription prize code for the, whoever gets the, the right date in U S central time. Uh, so that's, that's what you have to put into that thread. I'll put it in our, in our discord, newoverlords.com slash discord and the answers in that, in the, we have questions, uh, seg forum. I'll put a forum post in there. It'll be random between the people who get it right. You get one guess and put, you know, put it in there. 30 day subcode. Um, if I can get it, which I, I think I can, if not, it'll be like, uh, you know, cartel coins or, or something like that. Um, and, uh, if, if a hundred people get it, it'll have to be a random drawing out of those hundred, but you only get one, you only get one guess. So, and go crazy. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. That's, that's, that's a fun, uh, but I like SEMA. I like the 21st. I maybe we'll have to put together a distribution chart to see how many guesses people have in various places. Uh, Ides of March. I like mine. I think that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is pretty co cool. Yeah. All right. Anything else on uh, seven dot two dot one? Um, I'm glad we got the news. What do you think, Sima? Oh, I'm really glad. Yeah, I'm. I, well, I mean, I've been sort of looking forward to Galactic Seasons Four almost before we f I finished Galactic Seasons Three. Right. Although I I did enjoy having a break too. So I guess. <laughs> It's win-win for me. Yep. It is a bit of a wild bucking Bronco. And sometimes it's fun to, uh, to get off and take a break. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. But you do want to get back on that roller coaster and uh, riding that train is fun. <laughs> I'm going to mix all the <laughs> metaphors. <laughs> we don't want to close the barn door after the trains left the station there, folks. And if Frog had wings, he wouldn't bump his oh. ass a hopping. We have a we have a sentimental vote for May the fourth. Okay, that's the something's got to happen on May the fourth. Might as might as well be this. I think that's much too far out in the future, but it's a good it's a great day for a choice. Okay, with that, our EPC four five six droid four hundred fifty sixth astromech to broadcast this podcast is going out on airlock for all of you out there. Probably won't be in out in time for that PvP event with the devs that's happening tomorrow, but around there, I'll try to get it going tomorrow if I can get it cut tonight and processed on YouTube. All the feed and subscribe links are on newoverlords.com and YouTube slash newoverlords. You can also come chat with us in our Discord, which is growing nicely. It's still small, but it's growing. That's at newoverlords.com slash discord. Fun stuff going on in there. We just had another one of our creators from our Behind the Games podcast join today. You can ask Dazia questions about game development in Mexico. You can follow me on Twitter for announcements. I'm still on Twitter when it's up and available. <laughs> I was kind of baffled when TweetDeck disappeared for a little bit yesterday, but it's still there. At Max the Great is where you can find me. And then at the New Overlords is our channel feed. And if you're there or on Facebook or Instagram or uh, LinkedIn, some of the stuff even was on LinkedIn. Anyway, we will keep you up to date in all of those places. And with that, with that, we will talk to you soon. Later, everyone. <laughs>